As always, it's fantastic to be here uh, and see so many friendly faces. We love coming to these events. We love seeing all of you guys, and, uh, and we look forward to speaking with a lot of you over the next couple of days. On behalf of my box partner, Tom Stugais, and our entire international team, we'd like to thank you for your consistent support of all the films of 20th Century Fox and for continuing to play a vital role in the growth of our business overall. Today we live in a period of profound and rapid technological change, providing opportunities for that business, as well as challenges that affect both distribution and exhibition as partners. Today I'd like to talk about how we hope to address these challenges and the growth potential for our industry. Let's start by taking a look at the fragmented media landscape. It's hard to imagine that just 20 years ago in the home entertainment, uh, in the home entertainment options consisted of VHS tapes, pay-per-view, and a limited number of cable TV channels. What's truly amazing is how digital technology has accelerated the changes in entertainment within just the past decade. People are now consuming more and more content across multiple screens of all sizes, and therein lies the challenge and the opportunity. Today's consumer has access to an enormous volume of content on a wider range of devices, both in and out of the home. That has increased the amount of time people spend consuming media, but it also means there's more competition for their attention. We're constantly hearing about the growing threat from changing audience habits and new media technologies. Here are a few headlines which will no doubt seem familiar to you. First of all, America's motion picture industry is faced with a powerful and rapidly growing contender for the public's leisure time attention. Second, as it is, Hollywood itself is going to die if it doesn't come to its senses fast. Everybody who works there is wondering how soon the whole structure is going to collapse. Third, nowadays a night at the movies can be had cut rate at home and more and more people are choosing to spend their evenings that way. And then finally, now Hollywood is starting to get worried. Are people turning their backs on the whole business of going to the theaters? Do a lot of these sound familiar to you? We'll have a look at when they were written. This isn't the first time the motion picture business has been threatened by doomsayers, and the fact is we do face real challenges. Fortunately, change is something with which we have a lot of experience in the media industry. Just as those headlines turned out to be old news, it is important to remember that time after time, we turned the threat of disruptive technologies to our advantage, and our industry not only survived, but thrived. Most importantly, for those of us here today, the theatrical business has remained a vibrant part of the movie ecosystem. Over the years, many people have proclaimed the end of movie going as we know it. But every time the negativity gets stirred up, along comes something like Harry Potter or Pirates or Avatar that takes hold of pop culture and once again creates a movement of the masses to the theaters. Even with all the new entertainment options, the worldwide box office hit a record high last year. You and Exhibition have worked hard to match consumer demand by building tremendous theater infrastructure around the globe. And the studios have worked hard to bring the finest entertainment possible to those theaters. Although as we do that, the reality is that studios are facing dramatically rising production and marketing costs. The average production budget of a film increased 35% between 06 and 2011 to $90 million, and worldwide marketing costs rose to about $100 million. So studios right now have at risk nearly $200 million on average per film, and numbers have yet to be reported for 2012. To be able to invest in that kind of premium content, studios need to rely not only on strong box office, but also on strong home entertainment and television revenues. In fact, the blockbuster model as we know it today was spawned by the rapid growth of home entertainment in the 1990s, which enabled studios to invest in big budget films. The never before seen success of blockbusters in turn supported the growth of the multiplex business around the world and our industry grew really rapidly. Today, surprisingly, the theatrical business contributes only 25% of global studio revenues with a majority coming from these ancillary markets. And we're facing some significant challenges to that business model. Since 2006, the industry has lost $4 billion in home entertainment consumer spend in the United States alone, as it declined from 22 to 18 billion. Last year, the home entertainment market was essentially flat, which is actually encouraging, but we're not out of the woods yet. The detail behind the result is important, though. We actually saw a 3% decline in the higher margin sell-through models, and it was the lower margin businesses which grew, with rental increasing 1% and subscription growing 8%. And these figures include spending on 
on the, um, subscription streaming, where a lot of consumption is actually driven by TV series and not movies. We face a similar story in our international markets, where we've lost three and a half billion dollars in consumer spend since 2006. Ironically, despite the fact that box office has grown dramatically, it's in the high growth theatrical markets like China, for instance, where rampant piracy has impeded the growth of the ancillary businesses. To see how we might address that decline in revenues, let's look again at the studio's three primary source, revenue sources, theatrical, home entertainment, and television, laid out on a timeline. The logic of how we make our content available over time is simple. A film is released initially in its best presentation and highest price, and then over time moves to the least expensive. There's a range of different offerings, some with premium features at a higher price point, and some lower cost offerings, each suiting a different set of audience values. Of course, it all starts with the theatrical experience, because the theater is not only the best place to see a movie, it also establishes the initial visibility of our films in the marketplace. But as you can see from this chart, our films move through their international releases relatively quickly. After just four weeks, we've typically earned more than 90% of our international box office revenues. And these films are generally then not available in home entertainment until four months after the theatrical release. We call this period at Fox, it's a Jim Giannopoulos coined phrase, the dark zone. It's the only time that a film is really not legitimately available, and by leaving it unaddressed, we're encouraging piracy among consumers especially as they shift to digital consumption. Now, when you think about people stealing stuff, a lot of images may come to your mind, but it, probably not this image. This is Generation Z. Born after 1995, they're 46 million strong and growing, and they're the world's first real digital and mobile natives. They take for granted a world of smartphones, tablets, and high-speed wireless internet, and they consume more mobile media than any generation before them at their age. For Gen Z, there's no such thing as offline because their portable devices are always keeping them connected. And even the youngest are fully up to speed with digital devices. I'm sure many of you have seen this. They assume there's a touch screen. It, they assume that everything's a touch screen. So have you ever seen a three-year-old try to swipe a television screen like it's an iPad? It, it may sound ridiculous, but it's happening all the time, and there's a real point to this. Things that seem new and different to us are totally instinctive to them. We'll soon have a generation of consumers that have never used a landline, email, a physical storage medium, and rarely access the internet from a PC. And this is happening even more rapidly outside of the US, because in many international markets, the older legacy technologies and the platforms never really existed in mass. For the sake of our industry, it's our job to be in tune with these changes and to stay ahead of the technology curve. We have to, because our consumers, these guys, aren't going to wait for us to catch up. In fact, let me show you one disturbing sign that we're already seeing. This graph illustrates the worldwide estimated pirated new release movie transactions that occur between the theatrical and the home entertainment releases. There are over 750 million illegal movie downloads or streams that occur in that time frame during the course of just one year. And two thirds of those happen during the dark zone the red part that you see on the screen. This is obviously not a good thing for our business, and while we may not have all the answers, one thing is really clear. If we don't develop the habit of legitimate digital consumption, then Gen Z and beyond will be lost to piracy, impacting the studio's ability to invest in the kind of content that all of the studios will be showcasing here this week. So as we look for solutions to this dark zone, our strategy is to keep an open dialogue with you guys in exhibition while we evaluate different models that might make sense during this period. Again, as Jan said earlier as well, the theatrical experience is the first and most important part of the media life cycle, and we are incentivized to maximize it because many of our downstream ancillary deals are actually based on box office. But the business has to evolve to reflect the digital world and the broad access it creates. We need post-theatrical models that drive consumers to high margin forms of digital consumption provide legitimate alternatives to piracy, all while protecting the theatrical experience. That's the logic between Fox's new digital HD initiative, or DHD, digital high definition. DHD allows consumers to purchase a movie in high definition, store it in the cloud, and access it across all of their devices. It provides a legitimate product for the digital consumer, which addresses the significant gap in time 
after the end of the movie's theatrical run and before its availability in home entertainment. And it's because it's a premium offering, it carries a premium price that doesn't erode the value of a movie ticket. In the US, it's $14.99. We believe that DHD, which would release a, couple, a week or two before the physical disc, will also entice consumers to trade up from lower cost options that come later in that timeline we talked about earlier, including piracy, again, without undermining movie going. As David Putnam, the UK Film Distributors Association head stated last week, there's no evidence in the United States which points to a discernible fall in cinema going since the introduction of flexible release strategies. And this has also been our experience at Fox in the United States, where we've now released, I'm sure many of you don't even realize this, 13 movies in DHD since Prometheus. The health of the home entertainment revenue stream through an offering like DHD is essential to support investments in theatrical production and marketing, and in turn to sustain a healthy exhibition business through major event films like Avatar, Ice Age, and Life of Pi. And this opportunity will allow Fox to continue to produce blockbusters like those we have coming in the next 18 months. So there's logic to why new media has over time supported rather than hurt the theatrical business. We believe the current evolution in technology presents a similar opportunity, but only if we're flexible in adapting our model to the new digital landscape. We share the goal of maximizing consumers' demand for the theatrical experience, and that requires two things. First, it's critical that exhibition continue to invest in technology and infrastructure to maintain the ultimate presentation of studio product. And you guys are doing a great job on that. And second, it's critical that the studios produce the best possible movies. We face a pivotal time in our industry's evolution. We have to invigorate the declining home entertainment business and ensure that the continuing supply of high quality commercial films to your theaters. And we believe that DHD will allow us to grow those digital revenues, all while retaining the principles of our distribution strategy that ensure the theatrical experience remains vibrant. As you see today, Fox's commitment to providing breakout films to audiences worldwide is greater than ever. For us, the future is clear. Make bold, powerful, exciting cinema that breaks the creative rules, and most of all, envelops the audience in that creative vision through the best possible presentation of the product, your cinemas. We hope that you will give the DHD proposition some thought and join us in discussion on how we can make this work to the benefit of us both, and therefore, to the industry as a whole. Thanks.